the National Football League. Twin Cities. The scene a short time ago. This crowd decked out in purple, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football, folks, as the Vikings get set to do battle with the Seattle Seahawks. weekend of autumn and the NFL is in full swing as off we go on EA Sports. Amir smith set now from his end zone. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Come on, the Minnesota offense ready to go to work here. Their quarterback in his 10th season overall now and fourth is a Viking, Kirk Cousins. And what really attracts people to him? A passionate leader. Controls the huddle really well. Controls the locker room and also throws with anticipation and accuracy, especially evident when he throws the deep ball. Hey. On first and 10, Cousins. He's gonna find his tight end, that's Chris Herndon. And a good stiff arm there before he's brought down on a nice little game. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. The first carry now for Dalvin Cook. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Cousins now. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he goes out right around the 39. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. So, Charles, defensively here, you're going up against a veteran quarterback. He's got a lot of know-how, a ton of savvy, but guy who's not the most mobile of quarterbacks. What's the plan of attack? You spend all week pumping up your defensive front. Your defensive tackles, your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys who go after the quarterback the most because you know that he's not going to run and beat you consistently throughout the game. You can rush more aggressively off the edge and even up the middle because even if he evades you, he's not going to go very far. You have a lot more confidence going after him in the pocket. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Defense had a chance to get off the field here on the opening drive. Couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches, and sometimes maybe we can get you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized, and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. Now Cousins. And this one almost intercepted. 
Not a good throw there. Nearly an opening drive, INT. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Here's Cousins. Open man is Osborne. He's got him. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. To throw, Cousins. And a pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Vincent Mayoa in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. Just held on to the football too long there, Charles. That's point blank, right? Yeah, I agree with that totally. You've got to have that internal clock that goes in your head that says either get rid of the football or flush and go and use your legs and try and pick up the first down. I think he hung in there too long, and the blitz got to him. Now Jordan Berry on to kick this one away. And this works out well as it'll kick out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Seattle's offense ready to go here for the first time and leading them is the seven-time Pro Bowler in his 10th year now in the NFL, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills, the ability to throw from the pocket and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 11. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. That's taken in by Eskridge, complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. It's a game of five, brings up second and five at the 16-yard line. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. And yet again, he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by this Vikings defense. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Now it's Wilson. Open man is Eskridge. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A big third down pickup of 20 yards. No score after one on EA Sports. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Carson, and he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. 
Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now Wilson. Sliding up, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. And Daniil Hunter, he's the one who gets in there and brings him down to the ground. And, of course, that's not an easy man to sack. You know how elusive he can be trying to get outside of the pocket. That was a great play on the defensive side. Now, I wonder what was going through his mind because he didn't seem as committed to using his legs to pick up yardage. He wanted to keep that play alive to either take off and go or throw it away. But he held on to the football and ended up getting sacked. On third down, Wilson. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. K.J. Osborne, deep for Minnesota. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They've been playing the field position game thus far. No score, second quarter as they come up on first and 10. Cousins. Throw caught there by Osborne. And he'll be out right at the 35. 15 yards is the pickup there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. Timing is everything, and they work on this time all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to find his tight end, Chris Herndon, but it'll be second down. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Let's face it, that's just a helpless feeling for a running back there. He's looking up to find a hole, and all he finds is a whole lot of ticked off linebacker. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. Barry on to punt as he gets this one away. 42 yards on the punt, just two on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. 
Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. On first down, Wilson. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. They'll come up now on second and a yard. They run it with Carson, and he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. A reminder coming up at halftime. We'll check in with our Jonathan Coachman. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half. And our highlights will likely be on the defensive side of the football here. Scoreless game. He's got the first down and more past midfield. And smartly going into the slide there. Wilson has enough for the first. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. Clock running, and the Seahawks, they're running too, trying to speed up to the line of scrimmage. Now Wilson on first down. Steps away. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. First and ten, it's Wilson. He'll buy some, and the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. Umpire through the flag usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Here's Wilson to throw. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. He was able to get away earlier in the drive, but apparently all the time they put in practice finally came to the front, didn't it? They remembered their lessons and found a way to contain him when he took off on that one. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Back quite a ways here, facing second and 19. Now Wilson. 
And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. There's Wilson. Now left, he's got it to Everett. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. it through and we have action on the scoreboard just before halftime it's three nothing been a bit of a dogfight thus far into the second quarter now and we do have our first points a field goal yeah a lot of people say wow first action on the scoreboard about time to me the action's been right there on the field trying to figure out who could gain an advantage gain some field position finally get points on the board i'm loving this kind of game <laughs> it feels like kickers might play a big role in this one yes make sure you give them the respect they deserve they could cost you a game or win you one myers now converted on the field goal try now he's on to kick it away taking it about the one And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Vikings going to take over now late in this first half. And with him trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get into field goal range. scrimmage the 31 now on first and 10. Now Cousins. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free and it's second down. K.J. Osborne the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. Cousins. A hit turned it over the middle. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. on first down and the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down and on that one the protection just broke down you've got to have that leverage don't you we always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman it's essentially the same thing in pass protection get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Another try after the first down sack. Cousins. He finds his man complete. It's Osborne. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. Third down, Dalvin Cook. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. 
Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return, and there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. So time perhaps for one final kneel down before they take this lead to the locker room. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We saw a strong first half out of quarterback Russell Wilson. His guys lead, though by only a field goal, still anybody's game. As we send it back to Brandon Godden, and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. offenses seemingly still back at the hotel for the first half. 3-0 our score as the second half gets underway. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Bucks ready to go here to begin the third quarter. Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and ten. This complete to lock it. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. On second down. It's Carson. He'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Wilson now to throw on third down. Oh, he tries to get it to Metcalf, but it's intercepted. Picked off around the 41, and he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. That is just what this defense was hoping for, an interception on the opening possession of this third quarter. Obviously didn't want to surrender a touchdown and fall even farther behind, and we've gotten to know this team a little bit, haven't we? Could you just see their defensive leaders telling the offensive guys, telling the quarterback, don't worry, we got you to start things off. You take it from there. Cousins going for it all. 
And Thielen's got it. Touchdown, Vikings. Adam Thielen, 26 yards. And the Vikings have taken the lead. And man, Charles, talk about zinging something in there. Those gloves, they help with one-handed catches, the fun stuff. Any padding for a rocket like that? One would think so, but I'll guarantee you this, after that throw, his hands will hurt later. Not right now in the moment. He's just feeling good about catching it. Yeah, a little stinger, but a touchdown. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. A nice, tidy little drive there, getting the ball in excellent field position and only one play to score it. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. It is fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 24. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Seven yards to pick up there. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Second down and three. From the gun, it's Wilson. And this will go to Carson out wide. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Well, throw on first down with Wilson. He hits his target, lock it. Touchdown, Seahawks! Tyler Lockett, 62 yards. And the Seahawks are going to retake the lead. Pretty good response. They had given up the touchdown and the lead, but they struck back. And I love the way that they just saw it happen. Took a quick exhale on the sidelines. So let's go get it back and fast. Let's go ahead and throw the ball downfield and get our own six points. A huge chunk play to regain that lead. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Taking it about the one. 
And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Cousins. Open man here is Conklin. That catch good for only a couple. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn upfield and gain any yardage. the play fake Cousins and the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down LJ Collier what a play by him that's going to go as a loss of 13 so one quick easy analysis about why they've struggled so far they keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. From the gun, here's Cousins. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Here's Jordan Berry now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and possession will switch hands first and 10. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Wilson of the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Throwing is Wilson. That's into the hands of his tight end, Will Disley. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is? to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Dwayne Eskridge, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. It'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. To throw is Wilson. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. 
A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. So both teams trade touchdowns, and the third is worth through three quarters of play. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Operating from the 27 now, here's second and three. A give, this is Cook. And not a whole lot doing there, so he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. The Vikings on third down. Just one for five to this point. Here it's third and three. Again, it's Cook. Dancing away at the 35. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. And that's why Dalvin Cook is the Minnesota Vikings featured back. You put the ball in his hands, good things happen. Second in the NFL last year in rushing with 1,557 yards. And that's now back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons with 30 combined total touchdowns. What a player is Dalvin Cook. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. Throwing, Cousins. In the heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Jordan Brooks with it, and he returns it into enemy territory down to the 45-yard line. Scoring has really been at a premium, and Charles, you got to tip your cap to this defense coming in here. Their offense, too, but this whole team coming in here on the road, getting a hard-fought win. I think the way that they're finishing this one up, an exclamation point on a terrific game. As you noted, hard for them to put points on the board, and they hold them down one more time and finalize things. They'll run on first down. Carson. Eric Kendricks in on the tackle. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time. And that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Oh, they'll try the sweep. It's Lockett with it. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave them with a third and about four more for a first. Defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play... It can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. That's a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. Now it's Wilson. 
He'll find Eskridge here complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. On first down, it's Carson. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Second and five. They run again with Carson. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground and he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to convert albeit not by much on third and a yard And they will take a knee here. A second and 11 from the 19. Now a give, right side. Carson, and they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. It's a pickup of 13, and with that 13 yards, this ball game just about over. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. The Seahawks in victory formation as they go ahead and take the knee. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You I, like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium. That certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost felt like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.